All right, thanks for staying with us now. A report has revealed that 11,200 rape cases were reported in Nigeria last year, including children of some whom were defiled to death. Now, this report was based on research carried out between March, 20, um, March 2020 and August 2021. It included the interviews with 14 women and, eight, um, and girls survivors aged between 12 and 42. The interviews were conducted in Abuja, Kano, Lagos, Sokoto, Bauchi states, uh, and of the victims, a second year university student aged 22 was raped and brutally assaulted in a church near her hometown in Edo State, um, Benin City in 2020, even though she succumbed to her injuries sadly days after her case, uh, um, days after she succumbed to her injury, um, her case still remains um, quite prominent and, you know, we are hoping that she might find justice even in death. However, not many people can find justice. Now, cultural stereotypes, failure to investigate cases, and insufficient support for survivors have created a culture of silence and impunity and has given wings to perpetrators of rape. So today we want to, um, we want to find ways that we can curb um, rape and sexual crimes in Nigeria. Let's find ways that we can curb it. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp. That's 0810384663. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with a hashtag Wayshow. So, I mean, as I was saying earlier before um, we went on the break to come back, I, I was saying that I don't understand the psychology behind rape. I've never understood it. I, I can never understand it, right? Um, it can only tell me one thing, that this person is not mentally sound. Mm -hmm. There's definitely something, no matter how the person presents to be like intact or, in, um, <laughs> you know, there is something fundamentally wrong with that person. Because for a man to get to that point where they feel, or women in some cases, because women rape, but the yeah. only thing is that, you know, these things, men that are being raped, they take it as a, what's it called? Um, a thing of, a thing of you know, yeah, yeah. yeah it happened, it happened and all of that. And they don't, they don't see it as sexual assault. Instead, they are seeing it that, you know, I don't know, for some know. funny reason, I mean, it's pleasure for them. Yes, men that actually saw it as sexual assault and it basically has affected their sexual, their adult sexual lives because mm. how they started was probably their house help or an auntie or somebody. So they keep on looking so for those kind of people. Yeah, and aside from that, mm. they basically think that that's, how it should be and then when they now have start having like relationship with their peers this now looks like this is what i already know and then you're experiencing that this person is so detached during okay. sex okay. so the problem becomes worse okay. than you know what it looks like on the surface and these are things yeah, that people don't really talk that. about people don't talk about it True. You, the same way you know you have um or this um, psychopath that would kill people and eat them up or lock somebody up in the house for one year, you know, being maltreated, not giving food and judging just because of the punishment. So for this kind of people, it's like a, it's a trill. So From like, like this, like this Femi guy, From he has the resources. Yeah. So if you check deeply, he's deeply wounded mentally from God knows how it started. However, he felt like, let me try it. And then it has, you know, they have this power that they feel when it's coming, when it's going to somebody that would hardly speak. That's why they go for minors, yeah. you know, threaten the person and say, don't tell anybody. I'll if not, kill, I'll kill you or you will die. Or I will arrest your mother. Mm -hmm. And these are people that are not fully aware. They've never grown up enough. So it's like a... It's like a cycle uh, that keeps going on. Mm -hmm. So you hurt one person, you're hurting another person. And before you know, the entire nation is going through one trauma or the other. They're mm -hmm. basically transferring the pain. So for this guy, of course, the psychological empath em empathetical part will come in to say he's not okay. He needs to seek help. Mm -hmm. However, I believe that the best thing we can do is to educate people, to understand yeah. that don't be quiet. You have to speak up. There was a news I saw today. A girl spoke up and said that she's 26 now and she has been raped by her brother since she was six. Oh my God. And she has told her mom about it and her mom keep, just tells her sorry. Sorry. Like, for 20 years? And you'll notice that a lot of these children will run away from home because they want to detach themselves from this pain. That is for the ones that have the guts and the huh. mind to, you know, do this. And <sighs> then the ones that don't have the mind, they will be inside. 
suffering and smiling but going through the hurt and then if they now get to that mental place that they're like you know what i have to inflict this pain back on somebody the next thing they start to do it and then we're wondering why the cycle keeps continuing this is serious so i like the fact that you've pointed out some really salient reasons why you see that there is continuous rape cases. In fact, I feel like this 11,200 that it's they do is not even the real it's number. Small. A lot more people that have been raped. Because there are more people that do not come out than people exactly. that come to speak up. Speak and this is because of what you've just yeah. said. I tell you something and you say, instead of you to find, you know, a solution, you tell me, ah, don't worry, oh, it will, it will mm. pass, you know. Does that not tell you that even that mother might have also gone through the yep. same thing so she doesn't see any she reason doesn't, doesn't any i difference. went to i went to gabon I, I told you ladies about it i went to gabon you know at some point and i i was privileged to visit a home where they keep uh, victims of rape girls you know i, I saw a girl as little as four they five keep them there. Yeah, yeah they like they help to rehabilitate to rehab, yeah. them to to get over the trauma before they now reintroduce them back into the society. Mm -hmm. I saw a little girl as little as four and all of that. And guess what? Funny thing is that, because this thing is not even unique to Nigeria. It's everywhere. In Africa. No. In that one, it is even, you must, it's, it's almost like an unwritten rule that you must be raped by your family member. So this is not even like maybe an outsider sees you or something, mm -hmm. right? So why do we keep having the rising cases? Maybe, maybe you help us break it down. Is it possible to curb rape? and sexual crimes and if you think it is possible you know what are the quick things that we can start to look at it starts from the home yeah. it starts from the home it starts from teaching your child you know what is wrong and what is right and it is is it not enough to even tell them okay be conscious of your private part is is you need to instill that confidence in in whoever it is whether a lady or a guy you know, to say, you have to learn to say no. Hmm. Let's also look into the cases where it's consensual at some point, or it's not really consensual, and in the act, but you're saying no. Because you're saying no, and the person thinks that your no is not really no, but hmm. continues. Hmm. Subconsciously, you're damaged mentally. As in that one is even worse because you can't even no, no most of those people are not going to come out to say um i was raped well you know in your heart of heart that you really did not want this and there are times where you just come out and you're like what the hell just happened well you have to keep it moving because nobody's going to listen to you the next thing they're going to say is why well, did you go there? why did you go there mm -hmm. or what were you wearing or mm -hmm. something like that you know and that should never ever ever be the reason you know I mean, I, I've had advances from, from family members and as I was getting older and relating it to my mom and then she says, oh, subconsciously, oh, she has always been scared, but, you know, she didn't want to, she didn't, wait, she didn't want to, you know, instill such notion yeah. in my head, you know, but she just always prayed that, you know, they never, <laughs> and I just oh, smile, you know, because I'm like, well, I, I really wish you didn't know better, you know. I'm not saying that maybe you're going to mm -hmm. um, make it public or something, but, you know, also teaching the person to confidently say no, to confidently say stop it, to what I know that she will do is um, if some uncles came to the house that I wasn't interested in going downstairs to greet them, she would just leave me leave and you, let, yeah. you know, let me be like, okay, fine, you know, but... It's just some, some deeper issues that I wish, you know, I would have had the confidence to be able to speak up, you know, about it. There's nothing any, there's nothing serious, serious, you know, but it's just like now I'm older and I can relate it to her. She's like, ah, you know, we thought about it, all, but we didn't want, you know, you were pretty young and you're going on holidays there. So we didn't want, you know, you to stand now at that young age, you understand, looking at, you know, maybe an uncle in some kind of way, but no. I mean, the, so you the, the need thing, to instill this confidence in your child and the, from home. Absolutely. The, and the thing about the, the education part, right, is I think that is what is the biggest thing that is missing. Yeah. You know, because again, people feel like children are too young. So or yes, to, to, to have those conversations. Because at some point in my life, you know, it was almost like there was a molestation that happened and I became a molester, you mm -hmm. know, so it, 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 it just it's took the grace, it's a cycle, it just mm -hmm. took the grace of God 
for that it didn't go to that extent yeah. right or probably penetration or, or something but you see the little plays that you play touching each other and you know those that is how it starts right and most men are not most of the guys that i you know that are that indulge in rape they are not confident enough you know, to see a woman and say, you know what, I really love yeah. you, and express their yeah. feeling. So they would rather want. To, have, that's have my point. Suppressed. They don't have that, so they don't have the capacity to express how they feel. Confidently confidence. talk to a woman, Mary, I love you. I love the way you're looking. Would you like to go out with or me? Even face they need to. Yes, they need to be able to learn how to face rejection. They need to be able to learn how to talk to a woman confidently. Because why would I subject myself, mm -hmm. knowing that if I am caught? It can ruin my entire life. And I still go ahead and do such a thing. It tells me that there's something deeper that I've not, I've not dealt with within myself. So it's no, you said knowing that I'll get caught. You see, a lot of people, <laughs> if, you, if you check most Arab countries, the penalty is what? Death. Hmm. They will cut something or kill you. So those type of crimes, it's not like it doesn't happen, but you will rarely hear about it in those it type will of crimes. It will be so hidden. So if at all is a public... Like it's maybe so so grave that just anybody either is if not even alleged though not even that they caught you that you wanted to rape somebody or you raped somebody and there is something that is being done immediately. Yeah, drastic Trust action. me, a lot of people will not even get to do it. Really so like you said, we have to start by educating people to understand that first of all, when somebody treats you, it's never it's not only just when the person tries to penetrate you. When the person gives part sexual advances, shut it down. Scream and shut it down and expose like, it. Like scream. Do not mm. even say, eh, "Is my mother's brother? Is my father?" Mm -mm. Scream because I know somebody that I, I mean. I usually have self awareness sessions with a couple of my friends, and there was a conversation we we're having one day. A friend of mine mentioned that when she was about eight or nine was when one of their her cousins started molesting her, but it was from her sleep. So she would just feel somebody touching her from her sleep and then she wakes up. She'd be like, ah, what are you doing here? He will go away. But he kept on coming back. This thing happened for years. And the time it stopped was when she told her siblings. And it was some advice from a friend. Like, go and report to some, told her siblings. Everybody was aware. The oldest in the house had a conversation with the guy and it stopped. But imagine that she was he was persistent for years. What happened if the girl had not had just you know kept quiet and he had gotten it in his way? That's another individual that has been hurt by rape. And whatever the person tries to do with that situation is up to him or her. So you see this issue about touching somebody inside sleep. <laughs> I can tell you for free that I know that in our own generation a lot of those things happened. But again, back to what Mary had talked about, education. Yeah. Even us, right? I don't think our parents even understood. They don't want to talk about it. You know, mm. everybody just wants to shy away from yes. the subject of sex. You want to shy away from subject of sex. Molestation is happening under you. Because, let me tell you for free. A lot of our generations, the ones that were born in the 80s, I don't know about this one, so... A lot of those people experience that somebody yeah. touching you in the sleep, yeah. somebody pressing your, you know, your private part, or somebody telling you to come and sit on their lap. Yes. And all. all of those, <laughs> yes, all of those things happened. And it's close family members. Close Mom's family members. So, so you would, you, you would, would, would not, or you would 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 for you to be able to report those kind of people takes a lot of confidence. I remember because you need to be able to say, this, a, I don't give a damn about this what's going to happen. This person did it. It's you. It's you. I'm you pointing understand. at you. I'm pointing at you. And again, because again, we were repressed in our expressions, right? Right? Our generation was not the generation that you could just sit down like the way my children talk to me today. I just they wonder say, like, mm -hmm. you, you know, like our generation, we couldn't we couldn't talk back at you know adults because yeah. it was considered rude. It was considered all sorts of things, right? So if an older person was doing something that you didn't feel comfortable with, you couldn't even express to that person mm -hmm. that please can you stop this nonsense that you're doing? Mm -hmm. Because again, there was the culture of you must respect at all by all means, right? So some of these things, I think it has aided, right? Um, what's it called? Crimes of sexual molestations and rape over the years, right? It has aided it. People need to understand that it is it is more harm that the people are not aware. When my kids were going to boarding house, right, they are boys, it's not a, a same-sex school. I still needed to teach them. Yeah. I had to teach them they about, can, yeah, what's yeah. it called, sexual molestation for boys. How, you know, because I, I had gory stories. Yeah. I, was I scared? Horrible. Yes. But I had to equip them with don't enough don't talk information. Don't talk a lot that somebody cannot things. just come and tap your bum. For what? But the saddest part now is that he's a doctor. 
like a if, gynecologist. If I so, so let me now go back to <laughs> Dr. Leyer's own. Because what is most scary for me about his own case in particular? We all went for cervical cancer okay, screening. The guy has been you know, <laughs> only God knows. No, see, because what I'm saying is that it, it is it is really really sad for him because he he deals directly to the genitals of women, right? Everything that arouses a man, he's screening for breast, he's screening your your vagina for cervical cancer and all of that. So that he deals directly to everything that arouses a man. So for somebody in that nature, you do not have that level of control and respect. God help. <laughs> My question eh, is yeah. that he's a doctor. He's a minor. He, no, he's a doctor. And he has that kind of problem. What what are the things that we need to put in place to ensure that our keg, our what do you call them, are being perfect checked in a way that how can a doctor Mm, let's let's go on a break. That question is jam question. We're gonna we're gonna at attempt go to on. answer it. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right. Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing curbing rape. Uh, and sexual crimes in Nigeria. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so you asked a very, very important question because, again, for somebody in that capacity as a medical doctor, so I cannot now imagine my gynecologist when I was having my babies examining me and, and thinking of imagining, sexual imagining things, things with me. It, it, it didn't make sense. My, my, my gynecologist was a, was a man. Yeah right i mean so i cannot imagine that so 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 yes. now let me tell you how it's supposed to be best practices because the video that elsie shared in the group was really disturbing of a patient that was in on admission in his hospital he went there took her or you could see the drip and everything with her removed her clothes and he also removed his clothes and he had sexual it's yes for him. so for me that's what it's is a thrill and it's also a sickness mm -hmm. so for, for 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 when you say how do we curb mm -hmm. especially people that he's a medical you, practitioner so what yeah is because you medical, have proximity to my what body is medical, medical sorry you have insurance. access to my body as a med as a medical doctor you have access to my body right because anything can go wrong you need to check me and all of that ideally the practice is supposed to be you're supposed to be chaperoned you are not as a male doctor, going in to see a alone. female patient alone. Yeah. So those are the standards. Who is supposed to be checking them? Is it the medical um, guild of Nigeria? Is that is it the medical association of Nigeria that is supposed to be checking that these practices are being followed through, or is it the association of nurses or something? Because everybody knows that the human body is God designed it to to naturally um, respond. To things. I mean, if I go naked today, now a lot of people's whatever would you know. That's how it works. It is. It is a natural response. Yeah. The only thing that then changes is now the maturity and the emotional intelligence to understand that this is not yes self control. This is not the place all the time for this. I feel like the medical body should pro should most likely be having like an annual me mental evaluation. Because to be frank, everybody is human and we're dealing with one thing or the other. But the fact that you are a medical practitioner that has almost how many thousands of women's care in your hands, which means that if you're not being checked, there's every possibility that there are so many other people, medical practitioners that are doing these things, but nobody's saying anything about it. And it's just because, maybe because he's a bit prominent and he's in Lagos. So in, in underdeveloped states in Nigeria, this thing is definitely happening. But nobody's going to speak up and talk about it. So the great thing now is that shows like Waze will just help amplify this conversation so that wherever you are in Nigeria, you should speak up. Nobody should make you feel like you should be afraid. Whatever will happen, the person should be the one that will get the punishment. Not I, I want to hear Mary's thoughts. Now, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry, I was going to ask you a question. When you say mental evaluation, how, how, how is that done? That, sh that should be the medical body's business because but they should ensure that they, because it speaks, it speaks to them because this is to trigger they gave the license to these people so they should ensure that this license are given but to you there was a check before that license there's a given. question there's a question coming let okay. me hear that like would the is 
can the evaluation tell that okay this somebody person, is sick yeah well, that's what you should check yes there should be, there so, should so, be so there are, there should be ways. if you listen to if you watch some of these crime um investigation um what's it called um shows mm -hmm. in the u.s mm -hmm. you know or you watch them on netflix or whatever mm -hmm. you would n understand that there's, there's a psychology behind every crime yes. right and it takes you know experts to sit with you and know that this one she's a she's gone she's right. a sociopath she's like you're lost you know so there are actually tests yes. that can be carried out to check that you are mentally stable you're emotionally stable and all of those things so when you're talking about tests to measure you know how sick the mind is it is possible those tests are available mm -hmm. it is whether they now decide that it is a priority for them to do it right because now again don't forget i said this 11,200 cases that came out the these are the ones, ones that were bold enough to come out <coughs> and maybe some of them the cases the case was so bad that maybe they couldn't walk there was you know yeah, so that was yeah, how yeah. i know cases of people that have been raped guess what they, when they get to the police station the father and the mother they just offer them twenty thousand naira. they say don't well, worry they them poverty because yeah. now we are talking about why there's a prevalence poverty is a big issue right poverty is a big issue ignorance is a big issue right. Right, so when people are poor and they are ignorant, what then happens? Anybody can just come and wave the magic wand. As little as 5,000 naira can get you out of a um, rape case in Nigeria. Now, they say that the punishment for rape is life imprisonment, right? Do you think it is, it's, is um, what's it called? That punishment is a strong deterrent for rape, or do you think we should change it? I think it is. I think it's strong enough because to be honest enough. killing um death sentence yeah. is still long enough but notwithstanding you need to live long enough to actually know that what you've done is wrong but the I truth is we can't we don't have the laws in our own hands we'll let the jury and the courts pass their no, but if we were to recommend a punishment do we think that life imprisonment so maybe they should rip because rip we are talking back. about curbing no 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 we, we are talking about curbing rape yeah. right so if the people are aware that there is a life imprisonment attached to this crime and yet there's a high prevalence of rape don't you think that life imprisonment is not a strong it's enough deterrent I, I i don't think is that the punishment is not strong enough i think the issue is you just because people know they can get away with it, things that is the issue yeah. and the fact that when you sit down you think about it ah, if i go to the police now nobody is going to believe me nobody is going to believe me before this. i say this they will say oh why did i go there why did I put, I put myself in the situation you know stuff like that and when you think about everything you're just like well you know what let me just solve my problem by myself. myself do you understand i'll deal with my trauma i'll go for therapy and i'll be okay but you are not okay and subconsciously maybe you too you will want to rape some other person mm -hmm. you get so because and that other guy now is just thinking ah uh, uh, nothing now. Mm -hmm. There's I, nothing I, that nothing you, you understand. Or maybe he's in a high position where you know that <laughs> even if they go to police, I'll find my way out of it because, yeah, you can bribe your way out of everything here, right? So, I mean, I don't think that the punishment is not harsh enough or strong enough. I just feel that they, there needs to be more, like, strict adherence to it. I agree. Do you get So now they've said, okay, it may be because this was called out on social media. That's why this guy, if not, maybe, who knows, maybe he has gotten away with him before. He has, not it, maybe. He uh, has. Exactly. Mm. You get. He has. So it's, not, it's not a one, it's not today. So yeah. if, the, if the people have the confidence that, oh yes, you know, if I report this, if I speak up, something is going to be done. I kid you not, people will be able to speak up. But mm. when you know that speaking up is not, is not, is not for anything, you might as well keep quiet. Yeah. So Angie mentioned um, education as one of the ways to prevent this me yeah, i'm going to say self-defense go and learn how no. to defend no 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 Who's because in that? situations whereby you're not prepared mentally in the case that somebody i'm lying lifeless in the hospital i've just been given let's paint the picture you have to learn to defend yourself no and this is a, this is one scenario alero so we're painting all pictures right, right? There are some cases, okay, look at the young girl during uh, the initial lockdown that we had, the very first lockdown 
in 2020. Mm -hmm. There was a case that happened in Nigeria. I can never forget that case because the girl was lured by her friend to come for a party or something. And apparently the girl had planned with the boys and the gang raped her. Do you understand my point? So this thing you're saying, talking about self-defense, how where do we even start from at the self-defense? Or is it the one that I am in the hospital, they've just given me anesthetics, yeah, and right. I, I'm, I'm probably paralyzed halfway down, and somebody's humping on me? Yeah. You know, so yeah, I mean, like a different it's, a, it's, yeah. it's a different situation. Right, rape, rape is just it's just the most sickening thing that I can ever think of, right? So, I mean, if you say 14 years, sorry, 12 years imprisonment without fine, and the maximum punishment is life, uh, whatever. But however, offenders is less than 14. If the offenders is less than 14 years old, um, uh, the punishment is 14 years imprisonment, right? Maybe for the cases of this group. Mm -hmm. All of these things are, are there. I like, you know, uh, Mary's... Uh, um, uh, side, I mean, argument that maybe because we do not follow through processes, right? Now, for instance, this case now, he's been given an option of 50 million naira bail and two shorties that will have landed properties in Lagos. Of course, he's going to deposit his, um, what's it called, his international passport, both his British and his, his Nigerian passport. But guess what? We know in Nigeria that a court case can drag for forever, right? So maybe if we, if the government is really serious about fighting and helping to curb this very, very heinous crime. Maybe the government should start by saying that, okay, you know what? If anything around rape or whatever, maximum of three months, the case must be done and dusted. Right. Every single thing must be... Journalists are taking as priority. I mean, thank God for the people like the Mirabel Centers of this world. Uh, what's it called? I think Project Alert and all of those people. Warriors. They are the worst. Those, those are the people that started putting in a lot of pressure. Yes. You know, that even now that we've even got into... Because before, you go to a police station and you report a rape and they just look at you like, like nothing happened. Yeah. Right? So, I mean... It, um, social organizations, right, NGOs like this ones that I've mentioned, they've really helped because now a young girl knows that if I'm being raped, I shouldn't touch my body. I go straight to those uh, to the hospital and get all the samples out and everything, so that those things are, will serve as evidence. Because there's another part of you know that consciousness that some people don't even understand that there's an evidence that needs to be gathered because the truth is the law is emotionless. The law only follows evidence if you do, cannot provide that evidence to prove that you were raped, right? This is Dr. Femi Olale, and I, at this point, I, we must also commend, what's her name, um, Princess. Princess. Because it was almost looking like the case was hopeless, right? It was looking like the case was not going to get a headway. But you see, a lot of pressure, a lot of talk, a lot of, you know, counter pressure and all, more pressure and all of that would help. But do we have to get to that point where we need to pressure? Why can't we just get to a point where if something justice, is reported, justice, no matter who you, you are, understand? No and, class. and that's why I wanted to say, okay, the Bamiche's case that we're talking about, right, bringing it back, you know, something has been reported, a crime has been committed, the somebody person, has lost like, the their life. Even, the person that even did it, there's no like, oh, Do you it understand? might be this person, it might be that person. And they, they have no found who. and zeroed it in directly to the person. Why is it difficult, right? So it is the inhumane nature of our government that gives these people more wings to fly. Because if the government stands firm, like you rightly said, in some places, if you are caught with, even if it is 0, 0.0 gram of cocaine, you are being hung. Yep. They will just hang you. They don't Stress. even have time. So if we start to treat, and that's why I'm saying that maybe life imprisonment not might enough. not be enough, you know, because enough. again, People would get to that point where life imprisonment, they will wait, maybe they will use like five years to look for the, get to the, the case. Then they will not tell you that, you know, after that five years, that five years that you did before counts for, it doesn't, our judicial system is hmm. too weak, so right, let, let to, me... to start to fight these things, you know, legally. So maybe we should start thinking about things like castration, things, you know, because if, 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 you, if you remove the element yes. of, if you remove the element of the crime, that was used to perpetrate the crime you know castration right. but again they will not argue that what about women that rape men what should they do <laughs> this is the question i actually want to Tired. ask what happens in a situation whereby um in the marriage husband and wife hmm. but the husband rapes his wife hmm. constantly 
Like I have, I know somebody who is experiencing this thing. Mm -hmm. Let's say is, I mean, she mm -hmm. had to, not tell she you. had to is run your, away. Is your husband? That's what that's what I was saying. Is your what husband. is going to be done in that kind of scenario? Because I'm certain that a lot of people in Nigeria are going through this type of thing. Husbands raping their wives. So going by the definition of rape in law, in the law court, there's there cannot be rape between a couple. A husband cannot be said to have raped his wife even where the husband actually raped his wife and there is overwhelming evidence at worst husband that raped their wives get charged with lesser offenses including indecent assault with mere maximum punishment of three years imprisonment i hope that answers your question well, like, <laughs> so it now boils down to you see why i said i really love the day we celebrated today that women um, day right huh. um, a woman that stays in an abusive relationship she would go through all sorts of things yes. there will be battery there will be rape there will be all of those things so, but the only reason a woman will stay in that relationship most time research has shown that you know she is not financially empowered. empowered she is not strong enough to stand on her own financially so most times they would endure For that situation children. because mm -hmm. the law does not recognize but why? that well, you have already been legally. It's almost like you. He owns you, right? I, yeah. Geez. You know. So it's and don't forget that we are still dealing with the patriarchal system that we have already. So I mean, right. there are so many things that are against women. Women, right? There are so many things that are against it's women. Kind of, <laughs> like, so, you know, no, the reason why I'm, 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 I feel this way is because I know somebody this is happening to. So are you saying that she's just going to keep on going through this? Like she can decide to leave the marriage. She does what we're saying now, Nash. Money. Most of the time, women that go through this type of situations do not have financial capacity to actually be by themselves, Absolutely. and that's the reason why we have to ensure that we're supporting women. We have to ensure that we're encouraging women to do better. Just and so let's that we, start we to educate have, ourselves yes, more. Let's take some honest. comments. Let's start to educate ourselves more because, again, if we do not educate ourselves. You know, we will just be going around in circles without any real change. Right. Yeah. Okay. For me, rape is a serious offense that should attract severe punishment. Apart from life imprisonment, there should be amputation of offender sex organs. I've said this. Thank, God, yeah. thank yeah. God you ladies have pointed out that women do rape too, although in low proportion. Growing up, I knew some of my friends were shy to woo a woman, but today, with advent of socialization, more ladies are eager to wink at the guy first. I recommend that offenders should, offenders should be subjected to mental tests, like doctor who is exposed to female patients daily. Finally, some rape cases can be attributed to spiritual problems. A spell can be cast on, on one, maybe as punishment for sleeping with somebody's wife and all that. This is Austin from Delta. Uh, what's the, I don't understand. Is it that Mago thing? I don't know. No, maybe <laughs> you just say that they should be like a thunder. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think he's saying that like a like a spell. You oh, like a like, like a curse mm -hmm. oh, okay. to say oh anybody that does yeah, this, this will happen. Yeah, to you the know, person. so Right. Where you, they just don't are people, have control. Are people really of afraid of, of all these spells and curses? Maybe, no, maybe it's if it works. Like if maybe you see, about to, maybe if you, know, you see a man who is sleeping it, anyhow, what comes? Maybe to the head? thoughts. Are like, you cause? The is there moment, something wrong with you? Are you? It, are you it, it, it so okay? great that maybe the moment the person thinks about it, go <laughs> just strike. <laughs> I repercussion for what he has done. Oh my God! Go ahead. Okay, uh, so I have a comment here. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying ways? Covering rape and sexual crimes in Nigeria. Rape, um, rape sexual crimes in Nigeria has been a normal daily occurrence and it is very shameful, disgraceful and embarrassing. The punishment and penalty for these crimes for now are very mild and is not supposed to be so. The punishment should be severe. Nigeria is taking these things for granted i will suggest the idea of castration everybody's suggesting castration I'm telling you i will suggest the idea of castration this alone will set an example for others to follow my beautiful sister lero you are welcome back thank you thank you yeah. i miss you a lot i miss you too and then he's asking about ec norma and jennifer they'll thank be, you so much back daniel soon. but everybody's coming back soon don't worry <laughs> <laughs> so sex education should be enlightened on teenagers you didn't leave your name i was going to say that um i saw i found this piece very interesting and i want to just read an excerpt from 
from the piece, um, you know, it says that man is naturally selfish, right? And people will not stop rape, child marriage or crime generally. They will not stop rape, they will not ch stop child marriage, or they will not stop crime generally because they care. And, um, sorry, they will not stop it because they care, but they will stop it for the fear of the law. Mm. Laws will not be known and will not be known and obeyed after being enacted, no matter how harsh the punishment therein may be, unless there is measurable um, constant. So constant um, awareness. So there is more to be done above and beyond enacting and amending laws. Legal awareness must be prioritized, having in mind the education gap in Nigeria. Legal awareness is the vision behind the, the free daily law tips. Now, so let us start to, first of all, get this awareness out there. This is the punishment, this is this, and let us then follow through. See, if I know that if I pick this thing that is not my own, and I, you know, you know how it was. We were so afraid to steal. We were so afraid to do a lot of things yeah. because you were afraid of the repercussions. Yeah. But there are no, you know. It's just like back in the day, if you steal fire, burn everything, like so to even steal, then everybody like it was a every, time there was limited crime. Most of when it but comes to now robbery. it's just on a high. Yeah. Right. So I think we should. We need to get to that point where we really must say, you know what. This is a menace, mm -hmm. and this has to stop. stop. And I want to commend people like Princess that would never keep quiet. Mm -hmm. She's always going live on Instagram. She's always talking. There's another pastor now that she has called out. I think the person is in Portacot or something. She said he's next. They let them finish Anything. dealing with him. Please she's taking it. Back. And guess what? Because now, guess what is happening? What she's doing is revolutionizing the, the silence that has helped to... Uh, further embolden rapists, uh, ra yeah, rapists. rapists, right? Because now, I know that Princess will take up my case. I've been quiet and I've been quiet, hiding in my corner. Mm. But when I saw what she did with her, ah, so the, the boldness yeah. was passed on to that young girl that eventually went to her. She picked up Dr. Femi's case. Now there's a third person that she's also talking about. That's you amazing. understand? So guess what will then happen? More people we'll speak will come out and say, Princess, this thing, this, also, this one also happened to me. This also happened to me. This also happened to me. So you start having, and that's the, what happened with the Me Too movement in America. Yeah. Right? It started with one person talking and somebody actually, oh, they me actually, too. so wow. Me Too, it happened to Me Too, it happened to Me Too. And now this Me Too is really taking down CEOs from companies, people are resigning because, again, there is a strong, uh, what's it called, Moment. against it. There's a strong, clear message against anything. I mean, there are free people that you can have like, sexual intercourse with call. at your beck and call. Why do you have to subject somebody, you know, to forcefully take advantage of their bodies? Mm -hmm. So all of these problem. things, first of all, we need to raise more uh, therapists. Mm -hmm. Psychologists, psychologist, yeah. psychotherapists, and all of those things. Whilst we're doing that, then the law must really, really be seen to really be in favor oh, of the victims I of agree. rape. Absolutely. I, I think we can end the conversation there. Thank you so much, ladies. Mary, you know, it's a serious conversation, but I'm trying not to be too, so too that I'm not, no, I don't want to be too angry. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, Alera. Thank we're happy you. to have you back. Yes, I'm back. Yeah, back and not back. No, I am back. Oh, back. back. We're Thank you. We are, we, are, we are going on a break. We're not going for the wow. end for the We're going on a break, but we, we need to... The break is necessary because by the time you see us in general, we're coming with a bang. With a bang, bang. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. All right, so before we go, do ensure you follow us across all our social media platforms that wait to Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and more, most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like and share and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. I just want to quickly say that, please, if you know anyone around you that's been through rape or, you know, whatever it is, sexual molestation, and yeah. even if the person is not willing to talk, go and report the on case the on the person's person, behalf. Please. Most times, we just, it, these things continue because we stay quiet. Yeah. If you missed our quote, here it is again. Rape is one of the most 
terrible crimes on earth and it happens every few minutes. The problem with groups who deal with rape is that they try to educate women about how to defend themselves. What really needs to be done is teaching men not to rape. Go to the source and start from there. And also teaching women not to rape because we've seen again that, again, women also rape men. So let's not just limit the conversation. It's just that the numbers are more on the sides of um, men that yeah. rape. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another conversation to your screen. Enjoy.